Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, DDR5 is going to be required. Intel melts off this feature. You're going to need a new PSU, and Intel and AMD team up against Russia. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, it looks like you might need DDR5 sooner than you thought, at least if you plan on buying a new motherboard for Intel's upcoming CPUs later this year. According to a news story from Tech Power Up, Intel is asking motherboard vendors to avoid using DDR4 with their upcoming 700 series chipsets. According to the report, the reason is to speed up the transition to the new DDR5 standard. Now, this doesn't mean that Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake won't support DDR4. It will, plus it's said to work with Intel's current 600 series boards. But if you plan on buying the new boards that come out with Raptor Lake, DDR4 may not be an option. And the issue with that, of course, is that DDR5 isn't cheap right now. I fully get moving onto new standards and the issues with supporting two types of memory, but this seems too soon. Then again, with GPU prices coming down, maybe we'll see DDR5 come down soon as well. And while GPU prices are coming down, they're still absurdly high. So the best thing you can do is save a ton of money with this video sponsor, Honey. The shopping tool that literally saves you money when you just shop like you normally would. You'd think something like that would cost hundreds of dollars, right? Well, it actually costs free. No wonder it's America's number one shopping tool, and it's literally just a couple clicks away. Simply install Honey at joinhoney.com slash gamermelt. Then the next time you're shopping on one of their supported sites, Honey scours the internet for promo codes and applies them for you. And when Honey does find the codes, they average 18% off. That's free money. Basically, there's no reason not to join Honey. So visit joinhoney.com slash gamermelt or click the link in the description to start saving money for your next GPU. Next up for today, leading up to Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake release, we learned that the company would not include support for the AVX 512 instruction set, which was odd given they'd supported it for a little while at that point. Well, in came 12th gen CPUs, and we found out that support was there on the performance cores. It would be disabled when the E cores were on, but the possibility was at least there. In came a microcode update that erased that possibility, but then some motherboard makers actually snuck support in through the BIOS. Well, it looks like Intel isn't happy with that as they've now confirmed that they plan to fuse disable it on future chips, meaning Intel is dead set on removing this feature from Alder Lake, even though it's already built in. According to Anantech, when Intel's engineers that were working on the feature found out Intel wasn't going to support it, they were quote, livid. As for why, it's likely due to the company's upcoming Sapphire Rapid CPUs. And of course, AVX 512 is really only important for certain professional workloads, so most users won't be affected. But in the applications where it is used, you can see that there's a huge difference in performance. Plus, rumors point to AMD supporting it in Zen 4. So yeah, it still sucks that they're literally destroying a feature that's already there. Next up, it looks like we're really going to need new PSUs soon, at least if you want to get the most out of your next-gen GPU. For those who've been following the channel, you know that I've discussed the upcoming PCI Express connector for quite a while now. First, we heard about it thanks to leaks on the power consumption of the upcoming cards. Then we found out that it's in fact the new PCI Express 5.0 connector. Later, we got to finally see it, but things have been really confusing along the way. From how much power it actually delivers to this 12-pin one without the 4 pins at the bottom, it's really just been a mess. Until now. Intel has apparently finalized their ATX version 3.0 PSU standard, which goes over just about everything, and that's now been leaked. So let's go over it. For starters, the new connector is called the 12VHPWR, and it's that 12 plus 4 pin connector we've been seeing. That connector will be required on all PSUs over 450 watts, and it can deliver up to 600 watts of power. Now, that 600 watts is the absolute maximum, as there are apparently four power configurations depending on the grounds of two of the pins. So the PSU is going to determine how much power gets sent through. It goes from 150 watts all the way up to 600 watts. And interesting. Interestingly, the cables will have to be labeled with how much power they can deliver. Of course, that makes it a bit confusing, but it tells you exactly what your PSU can deliver to your GPU. Probably the biggest change here is the increase in power spike tolerance. PSUs moving forward will be able to handle up to 200% load for a short time. So a 1000 watt PSU will need to handle a spike to 2000 watts without overheating. On top of that, the 12 volt rail can go up to 12.2 volts.
results, we have new certification standards, and quite a bit more. Ultimately, I think this tells us two things. Rumors on future GPUs taking a ton more power are likely true. And even if you have a PSU with a huge rating, you might need a new one for these potential power spikes. At the end of the day, most of these changes should help ensure you don't have any problems, but moving to a new standard definitely isn't fun. And lastly for today, while I usually don't get into politics much on this channel, the invasion into Ukraine by Russia is obviously a huge deal, and it'll likely affect markets all over the world. Well, it looks like AMD and Intel are fighting back, as both companies have confirmed in statements that they're halting sales and distribution to Russia and Belarus. This ultimately seems to be due to the US's new export sanctions on the country. According to Tom's Hardware, the restrictions are aimed at chips that can be used for military purposes. So they could have potentially sold consumer products, but both companies have confirmed that they've in fact halted all sales. Now, you might think that Russia has some of their own chip makers, and that is the case. But it looks like most all of them are manufactured by TSMC. That's a problem for Russia because TSMC has already stated that they're halting export to Russia as well. Of course, this is mostly just companies obeying the law, but it could have a decent impact in the end. Hopefully something does happen soon as the people of Ukraine are obviously suffering immensely through all of this. So while that does it for today, what do you think about that new PSU? And do you think what Intel and AMD are doing could actually have some impact on the issues going on in the world right now? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!